welcome to another episode of The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Our show is brought to you by Whoop. Start tracking your strain, recovery, and sleep scores with Whoop, and even get an extra month's membership and a free 4.0 strap when you sign up with the link in our description. If you like listening to us talk about CrossFit news and everything that's going on in the sport, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We have our sports analysts, Brian Friend and Patrick Clark, back. This time we are talking about the semifinal CrossFit Strength in Depth. It's taking place. June 10th through 12th in the UK. Some stacked fields. We're going to start with Patrick on the men's side. Who's going to strengthen depth? Some notable names that you see right off the top. Um, it starts with Koski. Obviously, he's one of one of arguably the fittest men ever in Europe. I mean, obviously, BKG would uh, be the top of that list, but Koski is right there as well. I mean, this is a guy who typically, if uh, he's usually wearing that leader jersey after day one because it's usually a, a swim event. But he's pretty well rounded. He's he's shown a lot of uh, a lot of improvement in his strength, and he's still relatively young. I mean, he's been competing at the games I think since he was nineteen. And then Willie George. Willie George came off an. In, uh, of, I mean, we're almost on exactly a little over a year since he uh, had surgery uh, with his, I believe, his shoulder, and um, he looked really good at Dubai. And he's looked really good through all the qualifying stages so far in the in the game season. And um, I, I I can see this guy being a top fifteen, top ten threat in Willie. And then obviously there's a, there's it's just a stacked field overall. And uh, but right now Koski and Willie are the ones that kind of just stand out to, to me right now. Brian, what are your first thoughts when you take a look at the list of men going to the competition? I don't know. This is one of the those things where the analyst brain in me looks at this list and doesn't know where to go first because every <laughs> every guy that we have um, listed up there, I, I feel like I could I could talk for a minute about where they've come from in the last year or two and why it's exciting to have them as a part of this field, and you got a huge range of men uh, and experience levels within that because you got guys like Andre Hude, Henry Capilani, and Yorgos Karavis who the world got to see and know last year. Then you have other guys like Reggie Fassa and Giannis Papadopoulos and Alex Katoulis that were that you know have been very good in in glimpses and have been close but haven't quite gotten through. And then you have guys like Elliot Simmons, who we're not sure how good he is anymore. He used to make it to the games quite uh, you know a, a couple of years, and is he still relevant in this field? But kind of the guy I'm most excited to see here is actually Christoph Horvath because uh, I don't think online competitions are his best friend, but in live competition. He's a force to be reckoned with. Do I think he can make the games? This field's extremely deep. Do I think he can be relevant in the conversation? Yes. And the, the same is true for almost everyone on that list, which means that when you're talking about uh, the depth of field for, you know, for the men, this is about as deep as it gets. Brian, as we start to look at the women's field, what does the depth look like for them? I think it's a little uh, a little less d deep actually than the men's field here, but uh, not by too much. And um, you know, this is you know, K Katrin is the front runner here, and this is a good opportunity for her to make a statement and for her to say, "I am still relevant as a top contending female in this sport." Because yes, you got Jack and Dalston, Emma McQuaid, Terry Halgadon, or Emma Tolu, but who were at the games last year. But uh, none of them have quite made you know an impact on the sport like Katrin has. She seems to have rediscovered a passion for training and just for life in general. I mean, she's always a very positive person, but I think that the switch back to Iceland was a good time for her, uh, and she's able to be with her family a little bit more, be around you know her inspiration in this sport and Annie Thor's daughter. She's got a, you know an, another excellent coach in Yami over there. I think that life is good for her. And if she is going to be continue to be relevant in this sport, making a statement at strength and depth is important for her. PC, yeah. what are your first takes when you look at the women's side? Well, I mean, obviously the first takes are just those first five athletes. All five of those finished in the top 20 at the games last year. So that tells you how stacked that is. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, a, what, that's a quarter of the field right there. But, uh, but what I really want to talk about is obviously the newcomers there, the, the lesser-known mm -hmm. athletes, Amy Kringles. Amy Kringles, she's from the U.K. She, uh, she competed um, at Wadapalooza, did really well. She did really well, finished top 20. Uh, she's an up-and-coming athlete, relatively young to the sport, new to, new to sport. Evie Hollis is also – she's an expat in, um, I believe, in Dubai, but she's uh, from the U.K. She did really well at um, – Dubai. And then Ella Wilkinson, she's, she's actually a graduate, I guess, an alumni of that teen, teen division, that 20, that infamous or famous 2017 teen division. She was part of that, uh, that, that division back then. And then you have Sovig Sergerdotter. 
I mean, she's someone who um, she she's competed at the games on uh, as a member across the Reykjavik in 2017. But she's someone that has been taking the last couple of years uh, just trying to become an individual athlete. She was really close last year, but this year she looks really good. She competed at uh, Wadapalooza on a team, a team that did I finished, I believe finished third uh, in a team division, and uh, she's part of that that program. Um, that program crew down in uh, down in Spain training with Jacqueline Dahlstrom uh, with Christoph Horvath. So she's she's doing all the right things. So she might be the newest daughter that we see on the block here. Hmm. Brian, what is your bottom line for the CrossFit Strength and Depth semifinal? You know, Strength and Depth has uh, been a, a sanctional two years and the two both of the years a sanctional. And they put on an incredible uh, event and show both years. And this year they've been given a incredible stable of athletes on both the men and women's side the competition is going to be fierce because there's a lot of you know there are one or two athletes at the top of both fields that you'd expect to make it through that's three through five are up for grabs with at least 10 athletes in the mix for both men and women and this is one you're not going to want to miss pc what is your bottom line bottom line is how fitting is that name strength and depth because that's what we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about their depth and the strength of it so um, obviously you know that men's division is probably really it's really stacked it's gonna be fun um i think we talked about it regard in when we talked about the uh, uh syndicate is that you're probably gonna have eight maybe nine athletes who are within a few points of each other all fighting for those those last few spots you know three through five and then you know those athletes are probably going to do really well in the last chance qualifier as well Patrick Clark, Brian Friend, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time.